Mexico's drug war has snuffed out the lives of 60,000 people. Mexican poet Javier Cecilia and other victims in this war have taken to the streets across the border to protest the violence. Now, Mr. Cecilia goes to Washington. He and others are leading a caravan for peace and justice across the United States to the nation's capital. Jose Luis Jimenez, social media and web editor for the KPBS Fronteras desk, and David Shirk of the Transborder Institute at USD join me now to talk about the caravan and the drug war. Jose, Javier Cecilia lost his son to the drug violence. What were the circumstances and what role did this event play in his activism? Yes, his son Juan Francisco was found tortured and killed with six other young men in March 2011. And basically, instead of wallowing in his grief, Javier Cecilia decided to start protesting, to start getting active. He believed, he basically blamed Felipe Calderon and his war against the drug cartels for his son's death. And from there, he led a protest movement that started in Cuernavaca with about 200 people and ended up in Mexico City at the main square at Socorro with 100,000 people. What is the purpose of this caravan? The purpose is they have, they have five goals that they have in mind. The first one is ending the war on drugs. They feel it's a failure. Uh, drugs still move back and forth across the flo border. Arms flow south. It's not working. Second, they call for the legalization of some drugs, especially the minor ones like marijuana. And that will cut down the revenue on the, on the, on the powerful cartels in Mexico and will make them easier to manage. They also move on to the uh, assault weapons. They believe the assault weapons ban should be reinstituted to stop some of these arms that are going down into Mexico and responsible for a lot of deaths down there. Further, uh, they believe money laundering should also be addressed to, again, stop the flow of money to the cartels. And finally, this is uh, something that's been being talked about a lot, especially lately in Mexico, is addressing the drug addiction here in the U.S. This is the main customer base for the cartels. If you take away the drug addicts, if you take away their, their customers, again, that weakens the cartels. David, what effect do endeavors like this have on the public debate in the United States? And really, where does this issue rank in the current U.S. presidential election? Well, uh, Javier Cecilia is very well known in Mexico. Uh, he's been in the news for, for the last year because of his efforts to bring attention to uh, or to, to, to challenge the current strategy for fighting drug cartels in Mexico. Uh, but he's virtually unknown, I would say, uh, among most people in the United States. So one important effect will be to sort of raise the level of visibility of the movement to change uh, counter-drug efforts in Mexico here in the United States. Uh, on the larger national scale, uh, we are increasingly seeing uh, greater tolerance to the idea of legalization of drugs, for example, uh, in the wake of the uh, recent uh, shootings that we've seen in different parts of the country. I think there's also a, a, a certain uh, emphasis on uh, gun control. And so there may be a moment, uh, an opportunity, a, a watershed uh, at this particular point in time to start thinking about shifting policy, uh, at least on both of those issues. Uh, there's been a lot of attention to money laundering as well, particularly with the HSBC scandal. So we may be at a nice moment to uh, rethink some of our strategies and some of the, the priorities in the war on drugs. I want to talk about that a little bit deeper. First of all, um, Participants in the caravan have been very critical about U.S. policies on these very issues. They say, look, prohibition only enriches the drug traffickers and that, that, that laundered drug money and weapons continue to flow into Mexico unabated. Are U.S. authorities doing all they can to stop this? And are U.S. banks doing all they can to stop laundering the drug profits? I think most U.S. financial uh, institutions are uh, reasonably um, compliant with U.S. Uh, uh, standards and, and laws. Uh, it's, there are people within those organizations who obviously uh, turn to the dark side. Um, I, I think uh, the question of whether we're doing all we can, we're putting um, a, a significant percentage of our population behind bars because they traffic in or use drugs. Um, we are seizing uh, 300, 400 million dollars worth of marijuana at the U.S.-Mexico border every year and about the same amount on cocaine. We're doing an awful lot to try to address the problem, but even so, the, the net effect on drug use in the United States is minimal. And so I think that um, we're doing everything we can using the current strategy, and, it, and the, the critique of folks like Javier Cecilia is that it's not really having much impact. And so rethinking how we deal with the, uh, uh, the, the problem of drug use, which is largely a medical and psychological problem for a lot of users, um, is, is really what we need to start thinking about. 
David Shirk, Jose, thank you so much for speaking to us today.